Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year, as today we are on day 214, the hidden glory of God. Um, my name is Pastor Jay Lutz, and I've been taking you through this adventure uh, timeline for the last 214 days of 365 as we're going from Genesis in the beginning of the Bible to Revelations at the end, going through with the New International Version. And we're going through now the... Uh, the period of exile. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Isaiah chapters 49 to 50, Ezekiel chapter 10 to 11, and Proverbs uh, chapter 12 verses 17 to 20. Um, a little bit about each of the readings. Isaiah 49 and 50, we hear about the mission of a servant. The prophet here is referring to both the people of God and the coming Messiah. We see consolation when Isaiah proclaims, The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. And he goes on, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. These are words of comfort that show that Israel will not be forgotten by the Lord. In Isaiah 49, uh, verses 14 15, God tells his people that even if a mother could forsake her child, God will not forget them. In verse 16, we hear that God has carved the name of his people in the palm of his hand, yet another way of saying that, well, he will never forget us or stop loving us. After his resurrection, Jesus shows his apostles the wounds on his hands and feet. He allows them to be pierced for our sin. The mark on his hands and feet show his love for us. In Isaiah 50, we hear the suffering servant. Jesus gave his back to those who struck him, did not cover his face with shame and spitting. And Ezekiel chapters 10 and 11 in Ezekiel 11, due to many abominations carried out in the temple, the glory of the Lord departs for a time. But God does not abandon his people. In fact, the Lord's glory remains with them, though it is hidden during the exile. In our own lives, the presence of God might seem hidden, but we know he is there. Proverbs uh, chapter 12, verses 17 to 20, Solomon instructs the young men about well, the difference between truth and lying or false witness. So let's read all about that. Starting with Isaiah chapter 49 to 50. The servant of the Lord. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant. Israel in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and have, and for nothing. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant to bring Jacob back to him and gathered Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my strength has been my strength. And... Uh, sorry, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles. To you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, The Redeemer and the Holy One of Israel, to him who is despised and abhorred by the nations, to the servants of rulers, kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see and bow down, because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. In the days of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and you will, and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritance, to say to the captives, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hum, hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat upon them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west. Some from the region of Aswan, 
Shout for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth. Burst into song, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Those she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are ever before me. Your sons hasten back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your sons gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. Though you were ruined and made desolate, and your land laid waste, now you will be too small for your people. And those who devoured, you will be far away. Children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, This place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. Then you will say in your heart, Who bore me these? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left all alone. But these, where have they come from? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I will beckon to the Gentiles. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Can plunder be taken from warriors or captives rescued from the fierce? But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you and your children I will save and I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine and all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Chapter 50. This is what the Lord says. Where is your mother's certificate of divorce, with which I sent her away? Or to which of my creditors did I sell you? Because of your sins you were sold. Because of your transgressions your mother's was sent away. When I came, why was there no one? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Was my arm too short to ransom you? Do I lack the strength to rescue you? By mere rebuke, I dry up the seas. I turn rivers into a desert. Their fish rot for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the sky with darkness and make sackcloth its covering. The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. And I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting, but the Sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is he that will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who amongst you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. But now all you who light fires and provide yourselves with flaming torches, go walk in the light of your fires. And of the torches you have set ablaze, this is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Ezekiel, chapters 10 and 11. I looked and I saw the likeness of a throne of sapphire, above the expanse that was over the heads of the cherubim. The Lord said to the man clothed in linen, Go in amongst the wheels beneath the cherubim, Fill your hands with burning coals from amongst the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And as I watched, he went in. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple. When the man went in, the cloud filled the inner court. 
Then the glory of the Lord rose from above the cherubim and moved to the thresh, threshold of the temple. The cloud filled the temple, and the court was full of the radiance of the glory of the Lord. The sound of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far away as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. When the Lord commanded the man in linen, take fire from amongst the wheel. From amongst the cherubim, the man went in and stood beside a wheel. Then one of the cherubim reached out his hand to the fire that was among them. He took up some of it and put it into the hands of the man in linen who took it and went out. Under the wings of the cherubim could be seen what looked like the hands of a man. I looked and I saw beside the cherubim four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. The wheels sparkled like chrysolite. As for their appearance, the four of them looked alike. Each was like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the cherubim faced. The wheels did not turn about as the cherubim went. The cherubim went in whatever direction the head faced, without turning as they went. Their entire bodies included their backs. Their hands and their wings were completely full of eyes, as were their four wheels. I heard the wheels being called the whirling wheels. Each one of the cherubim had four faces. One face was that of a cherub, the second face of a man, the third face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. Then the cherubim rose upwards. These were the living creatures I had seen by the Kabar River. When the cherubim moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the cherubim spread their wings to rise from the ground, the wheels did not leave their side. When the cherubim stood still, they also stood still. When the cherubim rose, they rose with them, because the spirit of living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple and stopped above the cherubim. While well, I watched the cherubim spread their wing and rose from the ground. And as they went, the wheel went with them. They stopped at the entrance to the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of God of Israel was above them. There was living creatures there were the living creatures I had seen beneath the God of Israel by the Kabar River, and I realized that they were cherubim. Each had four faces and four wings. None of their wings was what looked like the hands of a man. Their faces had the same appearance as those I had seen by the Kabar River. Each one went straight ahead. Chapter eleven. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the gates of the house of the Lord that faces east. There at the entrance to the gate were twenty-five men, and I saw amongst them Jazaniah, son of Azur, and Platiah, son of Benaiah, leaders of the people. The Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are plotting evil and giving wicked advice to, in this city. They say, Will it not soon be time to build houses? This city is a cooking pot, and we are the meat. Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy, son of man. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and he told me to say, This is what the Lord says. This is what you are saying, O house of Israel. But I know what is going through your mind. You have killed many people in the city, filled its street with the dead. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. The bodies you have thrown there are the meat, and this city is the pot. But I will drive you out of it. You fear the sword, and the sword is what I will bring against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will drive you out of the city and hand you over to foreigners, inflict punishment on you. You will fall by the sword, and I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This city will not be a pot for you, nor will you be the meat in it. I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord. For you have not followed my decrees or kept my laws, but you have conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Now, I, now as I have prophesied, Pelatia, son of Benaiah, died. Then I fell face down and cried out in a loud voice, O oh, sovereign Lord, will you completely destroy the remnant of Israel? Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, your brothers, your brothers who are your blood relatives, and the whole house of Israel are those of whom the people of Jerusalem have said. They are far away from the Lord. This land was given to us as our possession. Therefore say, 
This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Although I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them amongst the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Therefore say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you back the land of Israel again. They will, they will return to it and remove all its vile images and detestable idols. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from their hearts of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts are devoured to those vile images and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the Lord, the Sovereign Lord. Then the cherubim with the wheels beside them spread their wings and the glory of God was for was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the exiles in Babylonia in the vision given by the Spirit of God. Then the vision I had seen went up from me, and I told the exiles everything the Lord had shown me. Here ends our second reading. Our last reading comes from Proverbs chapter 12, verses 17 to 20. A truthful witness gives honest testimony, but a false witness tells lies. Reckless words pierce like a sore, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. There is deceit in the hearts of those who plot evil, but joy for those who promote peace. Here ends our final reading. These are much words of wisdom by Solomon as he talks about truth. That truthful words um, promote peace and joy. That lying tongue may only last for a moment, but truthful lips endure forever. That reckless words pierce like a sword, but healing is brought by the wise. And, and honesty is a part of there. Uh, because the only thing that false witnesses do is bring about lies and break a relationship with one another. So that's not what we are called to do as God's people. We are called to, as um, we see in Isaiah, to be servants uh, to all, like Christ, who uh, who showed his his uh, humility. Um, we see this talked about in forty nine. Actually, we see um, a sort of foreshadowing here on uh, Isaiah forty nine when it says, verse sixteen: "See, I've engraved you on the palms of my hand." Uh, we will see later, Jesus. What does he do when he resurrects? The first thing he shows his disciples is the palm of his hands. He shows the nail marks um, that are engraved into his hands um, that show his, his dedication to God's people and his obedience as their servant. Um, for he said, I came to serve and not to be served. And then we hear about the service of the, uh, in Ezekiel of these cherubim very interesting about the cherubim um yeah i mean not only are they a little bit creepy looking they got eyes all over everywhere um but they have these strange wheels that follow them around four wheels uh that follow them when they go up they go up with them and they go down with them and it says interesting that that the reason why it gives for these uh it says they did this because the spirit of the living creatures was in them. So they don't have their own spirit within them. They have a spirit that follows them in this form of this wheel that's always constantly turning and whatever else. It's very intriguing. And unlike the uh, seraphim that are above God, um, the cherubim are underneath God. And they're constantly um, singing his praise giving glory to God of Israel from above, who is above them, uh, it says in verse 19. Um, yeah, of chapter 10. And yeah, and we see that they have four faces. And it's interesting also that here, it so before it says there was a face of the ox, of the man, the lion, and the eagle. And then here it says one was the face of a cherub. So cherub must also be um, the, the 
the ox must also be known as cherub. I don't know. Very intriguing um, that they have these four faces and they have um, not two wings like we see most angels having, but four each. And each one had four. So there's four of them with four wings. That's 16, if I do my math correctly, that's 16 wings. Um, yeah, so very interesting that they're that they're all flying in this sort of, and the, the wheel going up and down as they go. Um, very, very interesting. I, I don't know why it intrigues me so much, but it's uh, it's very interesting that we get to see these spiritual creatures um, that are very foreign to us. Um, one day I would love to, would love to be like Ezekiel to see um, these these uh, magnificent uh, spiritual creatures with eyes all over them. Uh, Anyways, we got. I digress. Um, but we just thank God that uh, that He is praised and that He um, He, I mean, He gives judgment upon the people, but He also shows His mercy and grace for the people. That uh, He will not kill them all, but there will be a remnant that He will bring back um, to Jerusalem. That he, he will gather up His children from all four corners. Um, and bring them back to Jerusalem in order to restore uh, the relationship and worship with him. And as we see in Isaiah, we'll bring a humble servant who will take the wrath of the people and bring it upon himself that they might be restored. And that will be the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So thanks be to God for that. Let us end together in prayer as we give thanks to God. God, thank you for our Christian brothers and sisters who have gone before us. We ask that you bring all people, especially those who do not know you, but those who do not know your son Jesus into full covenant with you. Because you are the one who has been promised, you are the one who has fulfilled that promise. Help us. Please help us to hear your voice and be drawn closer and closer to your heart. Make this our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today in Bible in a Year. Um, thank you for joining. I mean, 214 days we've been together. I, if you've gone this far all the way, um, that's amazing. I mean, even if you've come for one day to look at this, I encourage you to watch all the rest of them. And just to know that I, I wear a different color for every uh, period uh, to denote which period we're in. And um, so I've been wearing this fuchsia color. Uh, for the whole period of exile and it, it goes for a long time so you might wonder wow does this guy not change his shirt yeah i do i just i'm wearing this for this period and then i'll be wearing a different color for the next period but uh thank you for joining me i hope you have learned a lot and that you're you are growing in knowledge and wisdom of god um, that you're growing in the fear of the lord and that by knowing his word it might be a lamp as the bible says a lamp unto your feet and a light into your path uh, that it leads you um, kind of like a light in the darkness to see the goodness of God and to lead you in the right path so that you may not falter or stumble in your walk with God, but that you but that you are enlightened and can be enlightening to those around you. Um, have, a, have a blessed day. God bless. <laughs>